Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, this is probably the last video in which we will be tackling C++ and then we'll move to blueprints. So in this video, what we're going to do is just modify this target actor class. Okay, so just double click and open this up and it should open to gas target actor dot h hero file. Okay, so in this, what I'm going to do is just simply um, define a few functions that we'll be using as our target actor. So just below this line, I mean, copy and paste this code and this is the constructor of this uh, target actor. Then we have our tick function and then we have our world reticle. Now this is needed for targeting abilities to as a visual representation where the player is targeting. And then we have our trace range because we will be using line trace as our example for our targeting. So I want to give it a trace range for how long do you want the actor to target. And then we have these hit results that we might require to debug and dissect where we are targeting the impact location and the hit bone name and that kind of stuff. Okay. So this is an internal C++ function that I'll be using for doing the line trace. And then we have the start targeting, confirm targeting and continue and cancel target functions. Now these functions are required by the game playability when you start targeting and when you confirm targeting or when you cancel the targeting. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay. And then these two functions are required to despawn this radical actor and destroy the radical actor. Okay. So once we start targeting, we're going to spawn that actor and display the visuals where the player is targeting. And once he has confirmed or cancelled the ability, we are going to destroy that visual representation for the targeting that is the radical actor. Okay, so this is the header file of this uh, target actor and then we are going to move to our CPP file by pressing the shortcut control K, control O. Okay, so I am going to start by adding my um, header files. Okay, add this header file to your code. And then what I'm going to do is simply create the implementation of our functions that I declared in my header file. Okay, so this is our constructor. What I'm going to do is say that this actor can tick. Basically, the tick function is enabled on this actor. I'm going to, going to give the default value of trace range to 1500 float and destroy this actor, this target actor on confirmation and should produce target data on server. So by this I mean that the targeting information is always calculated on server. This can be helpful in cases you want to prevent cheating for example so that the target targeting information is always calculated on server and then the result is then sent over to the client to do something whatever it wants to do. And I want to initialize my reticle actor that is going to be used internally to spawn that uh, visualization of the targeting okay and also want to point out this in destroy on confirmation you can use same target actor for multiple abilities or you can just spawn them on each activation of a targeting ability so for my implementation i have chosen to destroy this whenever the targeting is complete and spawn a new actor every time the targeting ability is activated but for optimization purposes, you might want to reuse this same targeting actor for different abilities and you have to manually keep track of them and that has to be done in C++ and that is difficult and I could not get that to work. So I'm sticking with this kind of implementation. Okay. And next I, I am using this tick function. I'm calling the parent uh, tick function and then I'm calling the line trace on every tick. Now you might think this is a bad idea but uh, since this is C++ and the line trace functions are relatively inexpensive even when used on tick. So I am using this tick function on my on this line trace function on my tick to continuously update the target location of my reticle actor inside of the world. Okay so this is just checking that if it is a blocking hit I want to set that actor's location the reticle actor location to that blocking hit location and if it is not a blocking hit then I want to just uh, place this actor on this trace range the maximum range for that uh, line trace okay 
So this will be useful for our, uh, let's say, the teleportation ability of Gideon. Okay, now this is the line change function itself. So what I'm going to do is just initialize viewpoint and view rotation and get the straight start point from my um, character's viewpoint and view rotation. That is going to be camera. And I'm going to be tracing for complex. And I'm going over here, I'm just saying if my pawn is valid, I want to ignore that for my line trace. So I don't want to trace my own actor for this line trace. And then just, this is a simple call line trace single by channel, the equivalent that exists inside of blueprints. And I'm passing my trace it results viewpoint and then just tracing from my camera to a forward vector up till the trace range. Okay. And I'm scanning for my visibility. You can change this channel to whatever you want. And I'm passing my query params in which I have set this to trace complex. Okay. And this start target actor, I just tell my instigator that I have started targeting. So you can spawn this vertical actor inside of the world at the location that is defined by this. Okay. This is the initial location. After that, this tick function is going to take over and place this at the trace location of this line trace function. Okay. Now confirm target and continue. I'm going to do a trace once again for targeting. This is the call when I have confirmed my targeting. Okay. This is called on tick and this is used to handle this uh, reticle actor position. And this function is called only when I have confirmed that I have, okay, this is my target. I have confirmed my targeting and mark it as complete. And this is going to return me this target data. This contains a lot for useful information, but we are going to be handling this inside of our blueprints and using these hit results to get this target data. And because I have completed my targeting, I just want to destroy my right collector because like I said, Retic Collector is the visual representation of where the player is targeting, nothing else. And similarly on Cancel Targeting, I want to do is just call the Cancel Targeting and destroy my Retic Collector. Okay. And these two functions deal with the spawning and destruction of the Retic Collector. So if we have set our Retic class inside of our blueprints, if it is valid, I want to do is just uh, spawn this radical collector inside of the world and I'm going to initialize this with a few parameters like the player controller and the parameters that are being passed through the blueprints. We are actually not passing any parameters from the blueprint. This is also provided to us by default and we will not be using this. And I return this actor to the calling function. And similarly, if it is valid, I'm going to destroy it when this function destroy radical collector is called. Okay, so this is it for the C++ section of this series and you might be wondering why I've created these classes when I'm not going to be using these. Well, this is because if you wanted to implement, say, for example, network prediction, you have to have your custom ability system component and custom gameplay abilities and then you are going to use them inside of your character class, for example. I have already used this custom ability system component. You could have used the default ability system component and if you want to extend this project that would have been difficult to explain where to change your code. So I have already implemented this ability system component and gameplay ability classes in C++. So you could get a programmer to implement these functions if you wanted to implement more complex features inside of the gameplay abilities. Okay, before we leave this C++, we just want to test if everything compiles successfully. So just go to build and select this build solution. So this is going to take a while to compile and once this is done, we'll return to this video. Okay, so the compilation has completed successfully. So yeah, this is it for this video. In the next video, we'll be moving towards the blueprint implementation and start implementing those abilities one by one inside of our Gideon character from Paragon. So this is it for this video. Thank you very much.